All right, so we're gonna do more with quadratics. Today, we're gonna do what is called solving quadratics. Do you remember solving equations? Remember that thing I gave you a quiz on beginning, middle, end of the year? And solving, you had to solve for X. Uh -huh. Remember what I'm talking about? Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with quadratics. Whenever you solve these, what you're actually finding are the X intercepts. And that's where the graph touches the X axis. And we just reviewed that on your little warm up. And oftentimes there are two of them. Sometimes there's only one. Sometimes you could have none, that would be like a no solution. Um, but usually there's gonna be two more often than that. So where the graph touches the X axis. Now this is vocabulary, this next thing we're gonna look at. There's three other words that could stand for them. They are also called zeros, roots, and solutions. So no matter which one of those words the directions say, and you have to read the directions to know what on earth the question's asking you for, it's asking you for the x-intercepts, whichever one of those words it says. So you can't go, what are the zeros? Like you have to know that means x-intercepts, right? So if you solve by graphing, literally all you do is look at the graph and go, oh, there it is. It's super easy. And we did this on the warm-up. The only difference is when you're saying the zeros, you don't need to write it as the ordered pair. You can just say what the number is. You can write it as the ordered pair too if you want, but you don't have to, all right? So look at this first one. There's two of them. What are our x-intercepts? Good. It was really difficult, wasn't it? It was so hard. All right, how about this one? Now this one only has one. One, you see that right there? One, that's it. Now, if you're not given the graph, you would have to type it in using the Desmos calculator. So just watch this easy. I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna type in that first one there. What does it say? X squared uh, plus seven X plus six. Do you see how I just typed that in? Are you looking? All right. What is our first X intercept? Negative six. And then the other one? Negative three, negative one, same thing. Negative one. So negative six and negative one. That's literally all you have to do is type it in. Now look at this one. This one's gonna have one extra step of work. Do you see how it doesn't equal zero? See how the rest of these equal zero? Equals zero. And that's why they're called zeros is because the thing equals zero. You have to make it equal zero first before you can go type it in the calculator. So what could I do to this to make it equal zero? Add two, you're gonna do plus two to both sides. So it's going to be 5x squared plus 11x plus 2 equals 0. It has to equal 0. It has to equal what? Zero. 0. That's huge. It's like basically almost the whole lesson. So that has an x, and that doesn't have an x. It's a good question. So they're not like terms, so you can't put them together. Also, it should usually look like a trinomial. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Is type it in. Uh, what was it? 5x squared. Let me just change this, plus 11x uh, plus two. All right, so look it. I'm gonna click on the first one. What's your first x-intercept? Negative, yeah, negative two. Now look at this one. It is negative 0 0.2. So watch, here's what I'm gonna do. Are you all looking? I'm gonna come down to the next box and I'm gonna type negative 0 0.2. And then how do I turn it back into the fraction? Blue that little blue button and it's negative one fifth. So your answers, again, what was the first one? Because I clicked on that. Negative, one, negative, two. negative two, very good. And then negative one fifth. So it'll look like this, negative two and negative one fifth. I guess I should have put the and in between. I don't like to write the comma in between because then it makes people think it's an ordered pair. I should write it like that. They're two separate things, okay? The last thing we'll do before I give you your break, hang in there with me. If you are given the answers, so the solutions, roots, or zeros, you can go backwards and write it as the factors. It would be X minus whatever number it is. So please listen to me. It ends up being the opposite of what you had. And we're gonna go back and do that for examples one, two, three, four. Look at this one. Do you see how one of the answers was three? That means one of your factors is gonna be X minus three with your parentheses. And the reason why is three minus three is zero. zero. So it's the opposite. So for six, you would write X minus six because six minus six 
is zero. Thank you. Okay, the whole point is that it's zero. That one, X minus one. Yes, perfect. Now it's X minus one. There's actually kind of a trick to this. When there's only one, do you remember me calling it a twin when you had the same thing? You have to put the squared on there because it's if you don't have the squared, it won't be the U shape. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you for coming with me on that because that actually is a really difficult concept to understand. So anyway, now let's do the same thing with this one. Do you see how it's negative six? It's backwards. So when you write the factor, it would be X plus six because negative six plus six, zero. Okay, good. So what's the other one for that? X plus one, very good. Now let's do the same thing with this one. For negative two, be X plus two, and then X plus one fifth. Do you see how it's backwards? Oh, it's the opposite. Okay, very good. So for these, we're gonna kind of do what we did on the other side of the page except backwards. This time we're given the answers and we're gonna write the equation. You've actually done this before. It's not new information. Um, it's just, you have to set it up yourself. So look, if one of your answers is one, what is the factor gonna be? Remembering what we just did on the other side of the paper. Good, X minus one, because one minus one, is zero. All right, and then for six, what is that factor going to be? Good, perfect. That's the only thing that's new information. You've done this before. I've taught you how to do this. When you multiply those together, you draw your two by two box. Do you remember this? You were all really good at it, so just do it again. You're going to put x minus one along one side, x minus six along the other side, and multiply them together. You guys nailed this. Just do it again. The only new piece of information is that you have to set it up yourself, okay? That's fine to have a snack, but you need to write this down too and not be distracting, okay? So what goes on the first little window? X squared, good, perfect. And then this one would be minus one X. You can put the one if you want to. This would be minus six X. Now negative one times negative six, is positive six because the negatives cancel out. All right, and then do you remember what goes together? Uh, like what's always gonna combine? Like yeah, and which two are they? Yeah, good, do you remember the, how the diagonal ones are gonna go together? So your answer to the whole thing is X squared and then what, if you put those together, good, perfect, minus seven X plus six, and that's your answer. So again, you've done this, it's not new, you just have to set it up yourself. I'm actually gonna do example seven next. I'm gonna come back to that one because that one's a little different, it has a zero in there. So let's set this up. For three, what would be your factor? What goes in the parentheses for three? X minus three, good. And then this one would be X plus five. It's the opposite because negative five plus five is zero, all right? Again, that's the only thing that's new. You've done this part before. Draw your two by two window. You're gonna put X minus three along one side, X plus five along the other side, and then just multiply them together. So in the first window, you're gonna have X squared. This one would be negative three X. Perfect. This one would be five X. And then what would go in the last one? Yeah, negative 15. Good job. Perfect. Sorry, I'm ending the class there. All right. Hush. You need to pick up where we are. And then these two go together. So your final answer to the whole thing is x squared. And then what? What do you get? Close. Plus 2x. Plus perfect. Minus 15. Nice. That's all you got to do. Now we're going to go back to this one. I skipped it because it has a zero. It's a little bit different. Whenever it's zero, you get just X. It's just X because there's nothing else. Do you get what I'm saying? I guess you could write X minus zero, but that doesn't like help you at all, all right? And then what's the other factor gonna be, put your parentheses for negative two, it would be X plus two. Because negative two plus two is zero. You're looking for what gives you zero. Now that's actually an easier problem because you don't have to draw the little two by two window. What do you just need to do with this X out front? Look here, distribute. 
What was your question? Okay. So if you distribute, what are you going to get? X squared plus 2x. Good. Nice job. Wait, how did you get? Oh, okay. You're just going backwards. So like, for example, this one for the three, it was X minus three. For the negative five, it's X plus five. And then you just multiply them all together. You've done that part before. Literally writing that's the only new thing. Where are the other X? This one from the zero. If you have a zero, it's just X. Good questions. All right, and then this last part, we're gonna review our factoring. What you do is you set each factor equal to zero. What you're looking for are zeros. That's why they're called zeros. Now it has to equal zero before you can start. This one doesn't equal zero, it equals 12. So what would you do to make it equal zero? Yeah, minus 12, are y'all sticking with me here? We got three more problems. These ones involve some work though, so you're gonna have to actually write some stuff, all right? So it'll be x squared plus four x minus 12 equals zero. This is where we're doing the practice, right? It has to equal zero. We're on number eight. And then you're gonna draw your X for your X box. What goes on the top? Yeah, minus 12, and then on the bottom, four. So you need to come up with some numbers that multiply together to be 12. Don't worry about the negative. Good, it is six and two, and good, you even got the negative. Six minus two is four, perfect. So you're gonna draw your two parentheses. Again, this is not new. You've done this. This, this is not new information. The only thing that's gonna be new is the very last step that we do. For six, what would you put in your parentheses? X plus six, and then this one, it's minus two. Here's the only, this is the only new step, is that you're gonna write the answers. And remember, it's backwards, because you're setting these, e if you wanna put an equal zero there to remind you, you can. What do you get from this one? Negative six, good. And then what do you get from this one? Yeah, two, good, those are your answers. That last step is the only thing that's new. You've done all the rest of that before. The factoring, the Xbox, you've done all that. Just writing the answers is the only new thing. Can you watch for a second so I can show you how to check it in the calculator? Let me share my screen. If you type in whatever it was, X squared plus four X minus 12, you see how I type that in? Uh -huh. Now, where do I click on here to check the answers? Uh, the, yeah, good, good vocabulary. See how that one's negative six and this one's two? Yeah. Did you see how that works? Because on the SOL, you can just type in the calculator, right? Um, so let's do this one. Does it equal zero? No. How would you make it equal zero? Good. See how quick and easy everything goes when you guys pay attention to me? Nice, all right? So you're gonna have three X squared plus X minus four equals zero. The whole point is that it equals zero. That's the whole point. And then you're gonna do your X box thing. Now this one's a little tougher because there's that three out front. How do you figure out what goes on the top? Yeah, good. And AJ said it already, negative 12. On the bottom, what's really in front of this X? One, good, perfect. Are you with me though? Or you did it already, all right. So what are some numbers that multiply together to be 12? So six and two or three and four, which one of those do we want that'll give you a one? It'll be three and four, negative three. Good, because four minus three gives you one. Okay, four minus three gives you one. Now this is the step a bunch of you skipped on the quiz and you fixed it for the test. You all did great on the test. You can't forget to put them over three. You have to do that step. So you have negative three over three, What's that gonna reduce to? Yeah, negative one over one, which I know looks silly, but, and then you're gonna put four over three, which doesn't reduce. Sorry, say again. Um, you wanna leave it as the fraction because here's the point. When you draw your two parentheses, that's enough. You start with the denominator. So what's the first one gonna be? X minus one, good. You're not writing it, but you're listening to me. Yeah, it's because the three was negative. That when we reduced it, it came out to a negative one. And then what's this one? Start with the denominator. Three X plus four equals zero. That's the whole point. Now this first one you can probably do in your head. What's that one gonna give you? One and now this one you may need to work out by hand or some of you might get good enough at it that you can do it in your head. But look, 
If you set 3x plus 4 equal to 0, what would you do to both sides to start solving them? Minus 4. Would you minus 4? Four. Four, good. So you would get 3x equals negative, negative 4, and then what? Five by 3. Good. So negative 4 thirds is the other one. So you might need to work it out by hand. If it's simple enough, you can just see that, like x minus 1, that answer is going to be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Uh, but if there's like another number in there, you might need to work it out by hand. We're going to do one more. Oh, I like how this one is set up. Why is that a good thing? Zero. It equals zero. Perfect. We're ready to, well, the problem's not going to be easy, but we at least didn't have to like maneuver it. All right. Now, how do you figure out what goes on the cusp? Oh, you don't. Uh, good. Only it'll be negative. negative 120. Nice. How he did that in his head was six times two is 12. Then you put the zero at the end. All right, and then seven goes on the bottom. Now, I don't really expect that you know all the numbers that multiply to be 120. That's fine. Can you tell me? No, that is that is one of them, but that's not going to give you seven. Okay. What would I type in here to get the table? 120 over X. Can you guys keep paying attention? We're almost done. All right. 120 over X, and I'm going to make this table. Now, we're looking for numbers that add or subtract to be seven. 15 and 4. Well, it's 15 and 8. Do you see right there? 15 and 8. Uh, now you have to decide which one's negative because 15 plus 8 is not 7. Negative. Good. Perfect. 15 minus 8. Again, this is not new. We have done this. The only new thing is going to be the very last step that we do. All right. Now you have to take those and put them over 6. All right. So 15 over 6. That reduces. Here, look, if you're not sure, let me show you what to do. Look, if you're not sure, let me show you what to do because the calculator will do it for you. If you type in 15 over 6 and hit the little button, good, nice job. 5 over 2. Good job, Gus. Yeah, good job. All right, and then the other one is negative 8 over 6. Good job. Perfect, but if you didn't know, type in the calculator. Now, when you do the factors, you're going to start with the denominator. So what's the first one? Two x plus five. Perfect, and then the other one? Three x minus four. Perfect, that is not new, we have done that. Here's the only new thing, the only new thing. You're gonna set those equal to zero and get your answers. Now, these ones you probably can't do in your head because there's an extra number there. So let's work it out. If you set 2x plus 5 equal to 0, what would you do to solve it? Minus 5. Minus 5. And then divide it by 2. Minus 5 over 2. Some of you have stopped writing it. I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to write it down. All right. And now let's do the other one. 3x minus 4 equals 0. What would you do to solve that? Well, it's already a minus four, so we want to do plus four. Plus four. Yeah. And do you see how sometimes, like, once you do enough of them, you can start doing it in your head? Three x plus four divided by three. Good. So uh, four over three. Same. 